So what is Titan actually for, if not high resolution gaming, such as the kind that you would do if you had triple monitors. So our triple monitor setup for testing Titan was actually three 1920 by 1200 monitors. So for all intents and purposes, our results are gonna be pretty similar to what you'd see running three 1080p monitors. It's a little bit more demanding, but you can kind of extrapolate down a little bit and it gives you some idea how this solution is gonna perform. So the Titan's main advantage when running high resolution is that it has six gigs of video memory. So that's in addition to the 2500 some odd CUDA cores, the large 7.1 billion transistor GPU, and just general overall beast design. Ours ran at 1.13 gigahertz or so consistently with GPU boost. That's on air cooling. With water cooling it'll do more. So it's got a lot going for it. But what it doesn't have going for it is the fact that it is only one GPU and it does have to go up against competing dual GPU solutions. So the main contenders for this one, actually well all the solutions that we ran, were the GTX Titan the ASUS Ares 2, so this is a dual 7970 gigahertz edition card that actually is a very, very, very custom card, very expensive, but we used that to represent 7970 Crossfire as well as just sort of that, you know, what graphics card out there actually costs more than a Titan? Well, this one, and you know, see how, see how those stack up against each other. We ran a single 7970, with its three gigs of video memory, 7970 often, often, often gets recommended over GTX 680 for surround setups. And last but not least, we ran two GTX 660 Ti's in SLI to see how, these are two gig cards only, to see how those stack up, just having more GPU power and actually last, that one wasn't last, we ran a GTX 680. So that's a three gig card. So that gives us some idea how that, rather two gig card, excuse me. So that gives us some idea how these but still high performance, similar to a 7970, but uh, more frame buffer limited cards will perform. So without further ado, oh, this is all on our 3930K at four gigahertz test bench with 16 gigs of RAM, and all cards are overclocked. You can find the card overclocks in the shared Google document that I share so that you guys can see what our cards are clocked at. They're all at very reasonable clocks that should be attainable by you pretty much pretty easily. All right, so let's start with Crisis. Can it run Crisis? Ha 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 ha. The joke that never gets old on the internet uh, until it takes an arrow to the knee and dies or retires or does whatever it does. That's, that's funny, right? And planking? Planking is still funny? I don't know. Forget about it. So Crisis Okay, Advantage Ares 2. The Ares 2 absolutely walks away with Crisis. Crisis is an older game, so the textures are not as not high resolution enough that Titan would benefit from its six gigs of video memory. So Ares 2 goes, yeah, okay. We want more GPU horsepower. Also, excellent crossfire scaling. Helps the Ares 2 perform more than twice as well as a 7970. Something that uh, early on in my crossfire testing days, I would have said, oh, that's, that's an anomaly. There's no way that can be possible. Well, you know what? Sometimes it actually happens. It's very, very bizarre. So for single GPU solutions, 680 and 7970 are pretty close. Again, no advantage for the 7970 with its three gigabyte frame buffer, but the Titan leaves them both behind, outperforming them both by about 50%. 660 Ti SLI demonstrates why sometimes a dual GPU solution is not a great one. So while Titan may be very expensive, sometimes it can be worthwhile to run a single GPU because driver issues can force an otherwise theoretically more powerful solution to not really do very well. Now, we just saw Crisis 3 launch, so we also ran Crisis 3, where Titan stole the show. So Titan outperformed everything else in Crisis 3, including the 660 Ti's and SLI, although it should be noted that 660 Ti's and SLI are significantly less expensive than a Titan, destroyed the GTX 680, destroyed the Ares 2, which actually performed worse than the 7970. So this is an example where 660 Ti demonstrated that it's all about drivers. So on our previous game, Crisis 1, AMD benefited from dual GPU, while Nvidia didn't at all. And in Crisis 3, Nvidia benefits from dual GPU at 5760 by, by 1080, or rather by 1200, whereas AMD doesn't at all. So it comes down to the individual games you're going to play, whereas a single GPU solution always performs well, and we see that with the Titan. Far Cry 3. 
Another hot title, Ares 2 just runs away with this one. Far Cry 3 generally runs better on AMD cards, and that trend continued, and nothing really unexpected here. It performs almost twice as fast as a single 7970, and it takes the GTX 660 Ti's and SLI to even, I mean, they're not even close. GTX 660 Ti's and SLI are only slightly faster than a Titan, which is significantly faster than GTX 680 and 7970, but you can see the AMD optimizations that have gone into this particular game. Skyrim was an interesting one. This is a bit of a challenge with surround gaming in general. Game support is not always there, even for games that are extremely moddable. So Skyrim is, uh, is very moddable. Our, our stock test configuration for Skyrim has 18 mods installed from Steam Workshop, but it didn't actually work on either our NVIDIA or our AMD test platforms to get it going in surround. There was, a, there was a patch that used to work, but then there's a newer patch of Skyrim, now it doesn't work anymore. So I'm really excited about 4K displays. One, to help us really push these GPUs because that's even higher resolution than 3x1080, and the other is um, the fact that we don't have to deal with surround to get just super high resolution images and higher pixel density is another good thing as well. Moving right along to Battlefield 3, Titan steals the show again, just narrowly edging out 660 Ti SLI by about 5%, which beat Ares 2 as well. So this is a game that sort of like... Uh, Far Cry 3 was for AMD. This one favors NVIDIA pretty immensely, so GTX 680 walks all over 7970, and then the dual s GPU solutions um, actually do the same thing to each other that the single GPU solutions did to each other, with only the Titan sort of emerging on top. And, I mean, you look at the, GPU, at the dual GPU scaling, actually AMD scales well, but didn't have great performance to begin with, whereas NVIDIA didn't scale quite as well, but had better performance to begin with. Next up is Metro 2033, which is the first game where we really see the higher frame buffer GPUs pull away from the lower frame buffer GPUs. So the 680 and the 660 Ti both look like they ran out of memory because the performance just falls off a cliff compared to where they were hanging with their equivalent solutions throughout most of our testing. So while we don't necessarily need all six gigs that you have on the Titan for this particular bench, it does show that there are modern games or even older games that at higher resolutions, like when 4K displays start showing up, will benefit from more memory. So yeah, 3 gigs is, is enough for this particular game, but what if we did scale to 4K? What if, uh, you know, uh, what if an upcoming title scales to 4K? Maybe 6 gigs will be needed in the near future, um, especially if you want to run at the very, very highest details. I mean, I guess needed is sort of a strong word, but uh, anyway, in this one, Ares 2 steals the show, Titan comes in exactly where it belongs, and moving on to Witcher 2. So Witcher 2 made that point again. This was the first game that we encountered where it looks like with Uber sampling on, so we were running on the ultra preset, including Uber sampling, none of the cards were actually even able to run the game in surround except for GTX Titan. Now on the AMD cards, that's partly due to the fact that CD Projekt Red uh, does not allow AMD configurations to run in iFinity in their surround uh, set up, and that's for whatever reason that they decided to unimplement that because there was a hack at some point and then they turned it off for whatever reason. Um, but neither of the other NVIDIA solutions were even able to launch the game. So this is one where we are actually benefiting from not only the horsepower of Titan but also the huge frame buffer. And this brings into the picture how Titan is intended to be used. So it's low, it's low noise. It's relatively small for a high-performance GPU. I mean, it's 10.5 inches, which is, I guess, pretty big, but it's not the biggest GPU ever made, that's for sure. And it is quiet. So you can either put it in a small, high-performance system, or you can take a bunch of them and stack them together. Witcher 2 scales extremely well, even up to three-way SLI. We've shown this in the past with GTX 660 Ti's. So what that means is you could take a few of these guys, you could probably eke out around 45 to 50 FPS, with Witcher 2 at 5760 by 1080 ultra preset and have enough video memory to do it. So it's a very unique solution that way, a very futuristic solution that way, although maybe not necessarily the most cost effective one. Thank you for checking out our video on surround gaming with the latest high-end GPUs. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.